Hello and welcome to my new bedroom. This is going to be a makeup declutter of my entire makeup collection. I do have the honor and privilege of reviewing products for a living. So I do Tester Tuesdays over on IGTV, which is a weekly first impression review on new products or products I'm interested in. I also do Makeup Bag Mondays most weeks here on this channel where I test out products for an entire week and update you guys on whether I still love it and what I think about it. So it's a great way for you to get a very detailed review on new products first impressions, as well as testing it out in my life for an entire week. I also have a blog, streamwoo.com, so I do do this for a living. This is by no means the amount of makeup any normal person should have, and I try to keep it pretty condensed. So what happens is once I test out a product, if I like it or enjoy it enough, it goes into one of two drawers. Those two drawers get piled up, and then I have to do these entire makeup collection declutters, and everything I declutter that is still in good condition will either go to friends and family who need the products or want the products then they will be donated if certain women's shelters still accept these products for donation obviously lip glosses and mascaras and eyeliners they're not so keen on receiving opened anything that cannot be sanitized that's a little expired or a little old will be cleaned out and I will do my best to recycle the parts to the correct TerraCycle and parts places that will accept it. If it's glass, it's a little easier to reuse or recycle. This video is gonna be long because I'm gonna do everything. I'm gonna show you everything and then I'm gonna go in categories and I will have timestamps in the description box in case you're only interested in certain categories or if it's gonna take you a couple days to watch this video and you're using it to kind of fall asleep and drift off or just de-stress. So you can skip ahead to the timestamps in the description box. Now, last time I did this, you guys really loved how I went through every single product to kind of give you a review and and a swatch of it. This is gonna be super casual. This takes a really long time and I am cleaning a lot of these things out because I have four drawers of new products that I do need to rotate in and do my job and test things out. So I try to only keep a little bit of the things I absolutely have been enjoying currently and that fit my current lifestyle. So it's it's been a process in the last five years to really um, get good at decluttering because there's a part of me that never wants to let any of this stuff go because of what if I need it? What if I want it? What if I need it again? Or maybe this person that I used to be is going to come back. I don't know. It's just a weird hoarding mentality I have and I try not to do that. I don't think it's realistic even for myself to have an entire room just dedicated to beauty products. I try to keep it limited and very categorized so that I don't get overwhelmed. This is not the amount of products that any normal person should have. It is part of my job and I know you guys enjoy watching me declutter so this is why I'm doing this on camera. I know a lot of you guys want products and you watch these videos and message me to send it to you. I unfortunately can't do that because these are all opened and I don't feel comfortable in case like I pass on something that I don't even know I have. For sanitary, legal purposes and all that stuff. I can't just give you guys my products. I do do monthly giveaways for my newsletter subscribers over on my blog, serenewoo.com, and you get a giant bag of brand new products. And I do a lot of giveaways over on the podcast as well. So I do giveaways for new products constantly here over on my blog, as well as on Instagram and the podcast. Everything is linked in the description box. So if you support my channel, support my content, I do my best to try and get products out to those of you guys who are supporting my content as much as much as possible. I truly wish I could send every single one of you guys watching a box. It uh, Shipping just gets very expensive that way. I promise I will do my best to get products that are brand new and unused to you um, as a thank you. And I always team up with brands to do giveaways as well as a thank you for you guys. Without further ado, let's get started. I literally just moved in a week ago and this is kind of my setup right now for my every single day. The top two drawers are my makeup and then you also have this situation here and then everything that's kind of currently being used. So this is what the drawer situation looks like. And it used to be very organized, and if you watched my last makeup declutter, you saw how this was finished, and I loved it. I wanna get it back to that place, which means a lot of products have to go, unfortunately. And then this 
also kind of got a little disastrous. I just started shoving things in here. I really only use this bag because that's Makeup Bag Mondays and I rotate things in. This is kind of what needs to all come out. I like to put everything in categories, set it on the bed, and then we'll go through every single product. This way you guys get a review of every single product and also hopefully a little bit of a swatch situation. So let's start with some primers and some setting sprays. This collection isn't too out of control just yet. Let's just get started. I have the Ule Hendrickson Banana Bright Face Primer. Now this I only used once and it's just because it got lost in my collection. So I'm going to keep it for a little bit longer and probably rotate it into a Makeup Bag Monday to test out. I hear rave reviews about this product. It's supposed to be nice and brightening and hydrating. So definitely going to keep that around just to test out, especially since like both Patrick Star and Massa Miller love it. The next primer is the Zo Skin Health by Zen Obaji. This is the All Clips Sunscreen and Primer with SPF 30. Now, I didn't really get along with this, but I know my good friend Samantha loves it, so I'm actually going to give this to her. Um, yeah, it was just a little too silicone-y for me. I've got one of my favorite primers is the Tatcha the Silk Canvas. Now, I've been trying to get through this, but it is kind of getting grimy. I'm gonna try and use this up before the end of the year and I'm gonna keep that because it is my favorite. A very luxurious primer is the Guerlain and this one is a very nice lifting one with gold flecks in it. So I'm gonna keep this around. I just kind of forgot to use it because once again, got lost in my collection. Here is the Milk Makeup Blur Stick. This was a great one for hot weather or humid weather. It really does blur your skin. You can see right here. It just takes down any shine and blurs down your pores. It's really amazing and it's really convenient. So I think I'm going to keep this around just for a little bit longer in case I travel to a more humid weather or climate. It doesn't need to be used with makeup. It kind of does this nice blurring effect on its own. I have the Charlotte Tilbury Brightening Youth Glow Anti-Aging Color Correcting Glow Booster. I haven't really had a chance to use this obviously because again, I forgot I had it. So I'm going to keep this a little longer. The Smith & Colt Glow Bright Radiance Boosting Primer. I like this, but I don't feel like I need it. So I'm gonna let this go and pass it on to someone who might use it. Here is the Alginist Reveal Color Correcting Radiant Primer. I used this a couple times. I wasn't in love with it, so I'm going to let it go. Here's the Smith & Colt Black Drop Mattifying Face Primer. I do really enjoy this when I'm shiny, but it's coming to fall and winter, so I'm not quite as shiny. I'm going to let this go just because I have the Milk Makeup Blur one. Then we've got two setting sprays. This one is my all-time favorite kind of refresher and setting spray. This is the Lila B A Glow Face Mist. So I'm going to keep that and you can see I use quite a lot of it. And then this is a great one. This is the Urban Decay All Nighter to set your makeup when you need it. So I would use this if I'm filming for our second channel, the fitness channel Lead Fit, just to kind of make my makeup stay a little bit more. Um, and it's a good size that I'll actually get through. So I'm going to keep that. And that is going to be my primers and face mist. These are the products I'm keeping. I have five primers and two sprays. This is still a lot more than I would like to keep, but I don't feel bad about it, especially since there's a few that I really do need to kind of rotate in again, and then two, which I know I love already. Not too bad. Next category is concealers. This is going to be a little bit harder for me. I really love concealers and it's probably the one product I use the most next to tinted moisturizers. This is the Jouer Concealer. This is an incredible concealer for heavy, heavy coverage and no creasing. It's also great for drier skin. So I keep this for like when I want that big shabam look and 
the doe foot applicator is also quite nice this is also kind of not the perfect shade right now for me because i'm quite tan but you can see the coverage is just incredible you can cover pretty much anything so i'm gonna keep this for a little bit longer i think um then i have the clove and hallow concealer this is in 03 this is a really good clean concealer i would say it's a very good dupe to the nars radiant creamy concealer if you're looking for a cruelty free clean option then i've got the nars radiant creamy concealer in the shade medium one this is one of my favorite concealers i'm going to use this up um, or hopefully use it up we'll see but you guys know it's like one of those cult favorites you can see it's a very similar shade to my clove and hallow one um and it works very well. These new concealers are relatively new and I could not get over how amazing they are. They're the CoverGirl True Blend Undercover Concealer. Now my issue is I'm not quite sure which shade is my shade right now. I feel like the natural ivory is just way too light. So I think I'm gonna let that one go. But then the warm beige, it's almost too pinky. Um, this is a great applicator. You would think it'd be like too much, but it's just really, really good. And I think it's a really good dupe, dare I say, for the Tarte Shape Tape. Um, the formula, I think, is even better than the Tarte Shape Tape, and obviously it's a lot cheaper. So this one I'm going to keep probably to brighten my under eyes because it's like that pinkier tone. And then this one I think is truer, and this is in Buff Beige. But I'm worried it's a little too yellowy this is where i get a little off on my color matching but i feel like that works i'm probably going to keep all three of these until i figure out my shade because they're so good and they're pretty new to my collection i have the liquid cover from pacifica this is a beautiful clean vegan product that's reasonably priced at the drugstores at ulta and target and it's pretty easy to find I feel like so this is a really nice light everyday concealer that doesn't crease or do anything funky and I did do a first impression on this as well as the cover girl which will be up on IGTV if you follow me over there then I've got my clay de po, and this one is just one of those like really pricey items that I've purchased maybe twice this is pretty old but it's still in good condition and these do last three no they, they last two years so it's coming towards the end of its lifespan but I can get some more use out of it, I feel like. And this is in the shade beige. Quite pricey item, but there's a reason it's a cult favorite. Um, I'm getting concealer all over this product. Then we've got my Alima Pure. This is a really good, clean, cruelty-free brand and minimal waste as well because you just buy the refills for these products. And I'm in the shade Echo. This is a beautiful, beautiful, creamy concealer and very similar to Laura Mercier concealers and very similar to the formulation of my Clay de po. Not exactly the same, but very similar. And if you're on that clean beauty journey or clean... If you're on the clean green beauty journey, I think this is a good replacement for some of your more luxury high-end products. Got the Kevin Aquan. This is pretty new to me. If you watch my last makeup bag Monday, I tried it out. I like it. I just it wasn't the right shade currently, so I'm gonna wait until I am a little less tan to give this a proper test. And this is the Central Skin Enhancer in SX03. Then I've got my Glossier Stretch Concealer in G7. This is just a good goodie. It's an oldie, but a goodie. And it's a very good dewy concealer for those dewy days. And then I have my Lila B. This is an eyeshadow primer and brightener. And this is the perfect under eye concealer for me as well. So I really love Lila B products. They're relatively clean, very minimal waste, and just a really luxurious product. I actually had the founder on my podcast behind the beauty so it's called be bright and i like this one a lot so i don't see myself getting rid of any concealers right now just because i love all of the ones i have that's un that's probably excessive i do have some backups this is the secret camouflage from laura mercier this one literally will conceal anything you need actually you know what oh this this is tough i think i'm gonna get rid of the Jouer one because this one will do anything the Jouer one will do and I can mix it. I don't know. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna let the, you know what? I'm gonna give this to a friend. 
And then I have the medium new light from the Naked Skin Collection from Urban Decay that I need to test out still. And then this is a backup of my Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion Ultra Longwear Concealer. So these are three new ones that I kind of have to rotate in eventually. Um, I did not do very well in terms of getting rid of my concealers, but I don't feel like I've added too many in, since my last declutter, so I'm not going to be too upset about that. Next category, let's talk about some tinted moisturizers or sheer products for the face. This is my favorite category and what I wear the most, so it'll probably be the largest in terms of face makeup that I keep. Um, let's just get started. The first one is the Glossier Skin Tint, one of my perfect no fuss, kind of just don't even have to use a mirror, throw this all over my face products. And this is probably my third bottle. This is the G8 shade and I'm gonna keep it. It's very liquidy, very, very smooth. I just really love this stuff. Um, then we've got the new reformulated Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer with a higher SPF 30. This is a chemical SPF. I recommend still wearing SPF underneath your products no matter what. So I really love this. Um, I really love what they've done with the product I originally love. So I'm obviously going to keep this. It's still pretty new. really enjoy my Ilya Sheer Vivid Tinted Moisturizer SPF 20. I wish it was an SPF 30, but again, I still wear SPF underneath. So really, really love this stuff and it's good for another year. So I'm going to keep that. We've got my It Cosmetics Oil Free Matte. This is something I've been wearing a lot lately because it gives me such amazing coverage and it's not super matte. It's oil free and it's more matte than the original, but definitely not like a situation where I'm like, oh my God, this is so matte. I look flat and it's an SPF 40. It has a physical SPF as well, which I appreciate. I'm in the shade neutral medium. So this is one of those things that I just really love for like lightweight, perfect looking skin. This was something I used a lot this summer. This is the Shiseido Wasso Color Smart Day Moisturizer with SPF 30. And I believe this was a physical SPF. I really, really loved it. Yeah, it's a physical SPF. Um, I love it because it's color transforming and it was just so easy to use one of my favorite products from shiseido honestly in the last few years that it's come out and obviously this looks a little pink right now but it transforms right into your skin so this is perfect if you're kind of in between shades if not nothing really matches you but all of my tinted moisturizers are very sheer and kind of color changing and correcting so I love this stuff the only thing I don't love about this is that Shiseido does have a pretty um, strong fragrance at first it does dissipate but if that's something that you are concerned about I would say skip this but it it doesn't bother me because my mom used to use a lot of Shiseido products and so did I growing up so that scent is actually very comforting for me and it's oil free then I've got the old version of the Laura Mercier tinted moisturizer SPF 20 so I'm gonna let this go because you know I don't need it I have the new one I have two shades of the Kosas tinted face oil I have the shade 5 and the shade 6 now I feel like these shades aren't perfect matches for me I feel like I'm honestly a 4 or a 3 but I do feel like I like this. And it's one of those things where it's like, you gotta shake it up really good. And you've gotta almost have perfect skin that day. But, and you only really need one drop of this product for your entire face. I think the biggest issue is a lot of people are wearing too much and then it starts clinging to your skin in weird ways. So just be mindful of that if you try this product out. It is very hydrating and very like a dry oil. And I do like this product. I just don't know what shade I really am. So I'm gonna keep these a little bit longer and play with them a little bit more. I do have a first impression tester Tuesday on IG uh, TV on these if you want to know more next up I have the bare minerals rescue complexion tinted hydrating gel cream SPF 30 in buttercream 03 my absolute favorite um, Not going anywhere always have to have this in my collection This is the Charlotte Tilbury healthy glow all your hydrating summer tint moisturizer now This is something I've used on and off uh, this summer and I can't decide if I like it because I can't decide if I notice much this is very similar to the origins one the ginseng one that is also color changing and I think I like the origins one more and I'm kind of bummed I don't still have it because this one I feel like while it's 
color changing. It's not the perfect color changing technology and it's very moisturizing. So maybe I'll keep it for the winter because I don't have my Origins one. Um, yeah, I might keep this because it does do something, but I like the Origins one better. So if you're deciding between this one or the Origins one, I like the Origins one more. Here is the Derma E Essential Tinted Moisturizer BB Cream with SPF 30. I appreciate that this has a lot of shade range. I also appreciate it's a physical SPF 30. Derma E is also a cleaner brand available at drugstore prices. Now I like it, but I have so many things that I'm just going to let this go and give it to someone who's going to get more use out of it. Then I've got the Sisley Paris Fido Blanc Two White Pearl. This is something that I kind of am confused by because you press this down, um, here's the product, but I'm kind of like, wow, this is very, very pale and there's only three shades. I know it's very forgiving and I'm just trying to figure out like what it's actually doing. I think it gives you coverage, but it's just such a light shade and I really wish they would extend that shade range. Um, I think I need to play with this a little more because I don't think I give it a fair trial and once I play with it more I can either get rid of it or keep it. Wrapping up my tinted moisturizer more lightweight products I am keeping my IT Cosmetics CC Plus oil free matte, my Wasso Color Smart Day Moisturizer, my Healthy Glow from Charlotte Tilbury, my um Oops, that goes over there. My Sisley Paris, this is like borderline. I gotta test this out. If I don't love it, it's going. Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer, Bare Minerals Rescue Complex Complexion Rescue, Ilia Sheer Vivid Tinted Moisturizer. I gotta test out these a little bit more from Kosas. If I don't love them, they're going. And then my Glossier Skin Tint. Now, this is going to hopefully be the largest base collection just because I wear tinted moisturizers and sheer products more than anything else. Um, yeah, didn't declutter too much here, but you know, we're, we're, we're still, we're still early. Moving right along to foundations. These are going to be more medium to full coverage products that are true foundation products. I don't have a ton right now, but oh, I have more over there. That's why I was like, I thought I had more. And these are going to be all of my cream to liquid foundations. I have powder foundations in a separate pile for you guys. So let's just start from left to right, I guess. This is my Orsay foundation. I love Orsay. It's an amazing Asian skincare, Asian foundation brand. And the founder is just incredible. I had an amazing conversation with her. How many times can I say amazing? But basically this is formulated for Asian skin needs as well as skin tones. And when I talk Asian, from the lightest to the deepest Asian, she's continuing to create more shades because there is a couple little gaps and she wants to make sure that all Asians have the perfect match and not yellow or orange but the perfect true olive tone because there's different tones to Asian skin. Say foundation is just really amazing because it is formulated for Asian skin care needs. We tend to be very oily but also need the hydration because it's surface oil and it's dehydrated internally. So I had a lovely conversation with the founder on the podcast and I believe that will be coming up in season five of Behind the Beauty podcast. Um, I love the pump. It's a glass bottle and the best thing is that you can get these uh, shade finder sets that come with three foundations um, light medium and dark and then you can try out all three shades based on what you think you might be and the purchase price of the trials end up going towards your full-size bottle if you decide to pick up the full-size bottle now these trials are shockingly filled with product. I still haven't gone through these. I actually keep these around for when I'm traveling and I want to just bring some foundations. This is really awesome. If you guys needed to know, I'm in the shade 030 Illume and it's just a really good product, guys. Check them out, especially if you're Asian. So that's not going anywhere. I'm also not going to give up my NARS Sheer Glow. This is such a great foundation. This is the Light 6 in Guadalupe. This is my perfect match. And then I've got my wedding foundation, not the exact same bottle, but the same formula, the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. This is in four, and I believe it's probably still good. Um, I'm going to 
keep it around just a little longer just because I love having it in my collection. Here is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. This actually shouldn't go in my foundations, but I don't really know how to use this. I've watched a couple videos. People love this stuff, and I think I just need to try it out more but look at the glow I feel like that's so beautiful so maybe I will put this in my like highlight section so I'll put that over there for now um here is my La Prairie this is the Pesh skin caviar essence and foundation I really love this for a more full coverage it's a really really lovely foundation and also very long lasting very hydrating um, here is my Lila B cream foundation, which I really like for more fall winter. So I can't wait to pull this out This is the L'Oreal infallible 24 hour fresh wear foundation amazing drugstore foundation I almost feel like it's a dupe for the luminous silk I'm actually gonna get rid of this and keep the L'Oreal one. Am I crazy? I'm gonna I'm gonna let this go. Um, here is the Pacifica a light clean foundation really enjoyed this one It's pretty nice coverage very buildable especially for a clean foundation it's probably one of the more um high coverage foundations in the vegan cruelty free clean lines this is something i absolutely just did not get along with this is the amazing cosmetics smooth cream concealer foundation i don't know what was going on but the foundation just did not wear well on me so this is gonna go the smith and colt veiled threat weightless micro blurring foundation was a showstopper i did this for an igtv tester tuesday and i was really impressed this is my winter shade so i'm going to keep that for that when it gets cooler here is my derma blend smooth liquid camo medium coverage foundation this is an amazing medium coverage and for me this is more like a full coverage for my preference so good and it's really really long lasting i'm in the shade natural 25 n then i've got one of my favorite foundations I reach for all the time is the Ilia True Skin Serum Foundation. This is very, very similar to, I would want to say, Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk and the NARS Sheer Tint, or sorry, Sheer Glow. This is in the shade Chios, Chios, and I love it. It's clean, it's cruelty-free, it is just absolutely lovely. So keeping that then a sh another surprise winner from the drugstore is my cover girl and olay simply ageless hyaluronic complex vitamin c improved formula three-in-one foundation i really was impressed at how much i loved this foundation i don't think i need both shades so let me just swatch this this one is in sand beige and then this one is in buff beige i'm typically buff beige because um of summer i'm a little bit more sand beige but sand beige is a little too orangey so i kind of blend both of these out and then i it's like the perfect shade and it's a really good hydrating medium coverage foundation that feels like whipped mousse i think i'm gonna keep the uh, buff beige because i know that i'm gonna lose my tan soon and then i will um get rid of the sand beige for now so to recap what I will be keeping in terms of foundations, I will be keeping, of course, my Ilia True Skin Serum Foundation. I'll also be keeping the Pacifica A Light Clean Foundation. I'll be keeping my CoverGirl Simply Ageless, my Orsay Foundation. I also am going to keep my small ones for travel purposes, my NARS Sheer Glow, my L'Oreal Infallible Fresh Wear, the Smith & Colt and the Derma Blend La Prairie and my Lila B. This is very excessive and way more than I planned on keeping, but I really truly love all of these. So um, maybe I'll declutter a little bit more later, but right now this is what I'm comfortable not decluttering. <laughs> Outers, I have two types of powders, setting powders and foundation powders or powder foundations. So I'm gonna try and kind of put them in setting powder and then powder foundation type of situation but some of these can be used for both so right now these are more of my more coverage powders more powder foundation type of products and the first one is my alima pure this is their satin matte foundation in olive one one of my favorite clean powder foundations very buildable you can build it up to light medium or full coverage and something that i reach for it's easy to use very um easy 
<laughs> I don't know what else to say. Then this is a newer one that's new to my makeup collection. It's the Makeup Forever Powder Foundation, and this is called the Matte Velvet Skin. I'm in Y305. This is surprisingly an amazing pressed powder foundation, especially for drier skin, because it doesn't crease, it wears beautifully, and it doesn't dry out or cling to dry patches. So I really have been enjoying this and I was quite shocked at how much I liked it. So I'm definitely keeping this. I also like that it's pressed. It's a little bit easier on the go. Another one that I really love and am wearing today is the La Prairie Pressed Powder Foundation. And this is the powder foundation in Honey Beige NW30. You'll see this is how the pad comes out, but I just use their brush. And I love, love, love this. It's a beautiful buildable coverage. I would say light to medium. You can build it up. It just wears beautifully on the skin. It lasts all day. There's never any clinging to your dry patches. And it's got the skin caviar essence, which La Prairie is famous for. So, um, This is the Ilia Magic Sands Radiant Translucent Powder with SPF 20. So my issue with this one is I absolutely love 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 the translucent powder that's not tinted this one i'm not a huge fan of because it's almost like a powder foundation but not enough of a powder foundation and it can look a little wonky if i'm using it to set product so you could use it alone and it gives you a little more bonus of an spf 30 or sorry spf 20 not enough on its own but just kind of like maybe touch up your powder foundations or your spfs so I'm going to let this go because I have a backup of the translucent one I absolutely love. Here's the Physicians Formula Mineral Wear Loose Powder and I tried this for a Tester Tuesday on IGTV. I did not like the powder of this color. I felt like it was very patchy on me. Um, I like the translucent one so I'm going to let this one go as well. Here is my Lila B powder foundation and this one is really lovely. Um, my packaging's gotten quite kind of messed up. <laughs> I didn't realize how much I'd worn this, but it's a really beautiful, beautiful, easy to use press foundation. However, because I am keeping these two, I think I'm gonna let this one go, and I'm also keeping the cream one for fall, winter. This one is just um, a little more summery on the go, so I'm gonna let that one go and keep the ones I'm keeping. So I'm actually making some progress here in terms of powder foundations. I'm keeping three, the Makeup Forever, my Alima Pure, which is a ride or die one, and then my La Prairie, which is both these two are newer to me. So I have a loose one and two solids. I like the solids ones just because it's a little cleaner and less messy. Now let's move into more of the setting types of powders. And I mentioned that I really liked the translucent version of this Physician's Formula, so I'm going to be keeping this one. And this just is a really beautiful blurring effect. It just works better on my skin. It doesn't uh, patch up or do anything weird. I don't love this applicator though. So I would say just use the applicator to kind of keep the powder in there, but use a brush. It's going to work better. Now I have the Wowder from Glossier, and I haven't reached for this in a while, so I might let this go just because I haven't reached for it. It's a great powder, and I like the packaging. It keeps things in, but if I don't reach for it, i rather pass it on to someone who is going to use it before it goes bad. This is something I've been trying to like because so many people love it. It's the Seal the Deal from Lawless. I purchased this myself. I just felt like it was very patchy on me and very cornstarchy. Now I love what she's doing. I love that it's clean. It's silicone free. It's It just isn't working with my skin. It clings to my dry patches. You can see the powder on me. I've tried using it with a brush, a sponge, everything just doesn't work for me, so I'm gonna let this go. I have the Laura Mercier Candle Glow Sheer Perfecting Powder. This is like a finishing powder, and I really love this for when I do a full face to buff in any of the areas. I don't know that I need it though, because I'll show you some of the other products that I've been loving, and I just think I'm being excessive if I keep everything, so I'm gonna let this go right now, but it's a beautiful, beautiful product. It's something that I always reach for, and I do have a backup, I think, in one of my like backup drawers. This is something I've really been enjoying. This is from Alginus. It's their Color Correcting Finishing Powder, and this is something that I use like if I'm gonna work out and I don't wanna actually put makeup on, but I wanna look a little more presentable, this is great. This is a great powder to wear over your SPF to just kind of take down some of the shine. It doesn't dry out your skin either, so it works 
beautifully on drier skin as well as oily skin and it does truly color correct which is awesome so i really like this from algenist i'm gonna keep that um here's my current like go-to setting powder it's from charlotte tilbury this is part of my project pan which i absolutely hate doing but uh i really love this powder so i've been using it up and the one thing project pan has taught me is to use up what i love if i love it that much and miss it i can repurchase it or um try something new like there's never a reason to just save your makeup because it does go bad I'm trying to learn from my mistakes hopefully here's my hourglass powder that i made and i really need to pull this out more so i'm going to keep this around i just need to use it more this is the hourglass veil translucent setting powder and this was something i absolutely loved when it came out and i was using forever i just haven't reached for it recently because I've been trying to get through my Charlotte Tilbury one. I just eyed this one over there. This is my Pacifica um, Crystal Rays Luminous Setting Powder. So the reason I haven't been using my Hourglass one as much is because I've been using the Pacifica one and or the Charlotte Tilbury one trying to finish that up. This one's really lovely. It's a very finely milled powder and it smells like cherries which is really strange, but also really lovely. Um, and it has a little bit of glitter, but it's not too much. And it just gives your skin this beautiful radiance. I like using it under the eyes and all over my cheekbones. So anyways, um, these are the powders I think I'm gonna be keeping. The Pacifica, the Hourglass Veil, so two, three setting powders that are truly loose setting powders, and then three pressed situations. Let's move into some brow products. Here is the Urban Decay Double Down Brow, and this is a really lovely brow product. It's like a moussey texture, really like putty-ish moussey. They last all day. It is a little tough, I feel like, the shade range to find the perfect match, you guys. So even as a brunette, I feel like a lot of them skew closer on a redder side, but this is the one that matches me the closest, and it's Warm Brown Brunette Betty. So all of the browns are very, very warm, so that's a little challenging. Then I've got my Elate Cosmetics Brow Palmade. This is just lovely. You can see I've hit pan, so I'm gonna keep using that up. So I really only have two types of um, like powdery or palmade types of products. Then I have some pencils, and I don't think I'm gonna let go of any of these because they do run out pretty quickly, and I use this every day almost. So the current one I've been using is the Kevin Aquan the Precision Brow Pencil. It's a mechanical brow pencil, and it has a spoolie on one end. This is very, very similar to my favorite Clean Beauty one, which is the Kamiko Super Fine Eyebrow Pencil. And you guys have seen this a lot in my Makeup Bag Mondays. So this one, again, very similar design, very similar shades. This is Coffee in the Kamiko one, if you're a brunette like me, and then the Kevin Aquan one is Brunette. Then I've got the new Hourglass Arch Pencil. This is Soft Brunette, and it's the Micro Sculpting Pencil. I really appreciate that they did this because I love the color range from Hourglass in their Brow Arch products, but I wasn't crazy about the design. So this is a more slim design, more precise design. It's a twist-up mechanical pencil like the other ones. And then this has the spoolie on the other end. I also like that there's two caps. This always makes me nervous. But anyways, I'm gonna keep all three of these because they do run out quite quickly and they're kind of expensive. So I'm gonna use that up. Then I've got the Urban Decay Brow Blade. This is the waterproof pencil on one end, which is okay, it's decent. I'm not like the, I'm not dying over it. What I love is their ink stain. This is a calligraphy, brush and it's a, a beautiful beautiful way to just fill in the brows now my only issue is that the brown is a little bit warm for me so it's not the perfect shade so i'm actually going to let this go because it's called dark drapes and i i'm going to tell you why so this is going the reason that one's going is because Glossier came out with their brow flick and they have a truer, deeper shade and a truer brown with less red. I just got the brown with the less red because the black is a little bit too dark for me, but it's the same concept, a calligraphy style pen, and you just get, are doing that flick. So I'm keeping the Glossier one instead. And then I've got some brow setting products. This is the Instant Brow Fix from Thrive Cosmetics, and this is Serena. <laughs> I thought that was cute. I really like this. It's a nice brow 
spoolie it's like the perfect shape it has a very lovely texture to it as well and it sets your brows without being crunchy it also does tint your brows a little bit so it's a really lovely spoolie and it's a really good product what i've been using mostly to set my brow pencil is the hourglass arch brow shaping gel in clear i did not like the tinted formulas of the hourglass arch brow shaping gel um in the other shades but i love it in clear so i'm glad i tried that out and then i have the zuzu Lux clear mascara that i was using but i like the hourglass one more so i'm gonna let this one go then i've got the urban decay brow endowed primer and color this is something that's very unique and it's very good at building up the brow thickness and brow fibers of your brows if you're very sparse but it can be kind of messy too. But I do love how thin these spoolies are. The coloring, again, is a little bit better than the other ones. It's not as red, but it is definitely not the perfect tone to match me either. So I'm gonna let this go. I really hope they extend the range of the Urban Decay Brow products because I absolutely love them. I just wish it was less red in their brunette shades. Recapping what I'll be keeping for brows, I have two brow pomade type of products, and then I have three pencils, a calligraphy pen and two setting products moving into eyeshadows eye types of products this is always very hard for me but i have to be honest i don't wear a lot of eyeshadow anymore so there's no reason for me to keep the amount i'm keeping however there are a couple products i absolutely love and i'm probably keeping more than i should so let's start with the single liquid eye products I have these three from Laura Mercier, which I find very unique. And last time I decluttered, I definitely did not have anything like this in my collection. So I'm going to just swatch this for you. This is the Caviar Chrome Veil Lightweight Liquid Eye Color. And this is in Opalescent. So this is a beautiful on its own or all over topper for other products. And then I have the same product in moonlight shimmer and this is just absolutely gorgeous guys look at that and then this one is in the shade night and i feel like this is this beautiful like grungy rocker look so i kept these three last declutter i have to be honest i haven't played with them since my declutter but i need to and i'm gonna keep these unless I find something that's very similar. Then I have the MAC Dazzle Shadow Liquid, and this is in Flash and Lash, or Flash, Flash and Dash. Excuse me, I'm losing my eyesight. And this is a beautiful like gold glitter. You never know when you need to pull out that glitter, so I always like to keep a little bit of glitter, and I don't think I have any gold glitters like this. Then Kosas launched their 10 second eyeshadows. These are water-based and I'm not getting rid of any of these because they're my absolute favorite. I'll show you some of my favorite ones, but I did do a Makeup Bag Monday review on this when it came out and also a Tester Tuesday on IGTV. So my absolute favorite is Globe and this is the one I wear the most of. And you'll see just how beautiful that is i wish you guys could like touch it because it feels like water it feels like the most lightweight beautiful water and it wears beautifully throughout the day it's got this nice metallic sheen so globe is my absolute favorite another one i really like is element this is more of a matte tone you do want to make sure you shake these up really well and the pigmentation is very good and it's water-based and once it dries it doesn't really go anywhere so i love 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 these and they truly are the quickest shadows so elements another one of my favorite and this is supreme which was also one of my favorites but i wear element and globe the most i feel like i forget about supreme a little bit just because it gets lost but this is that beautiful metallic gold it almost reminds me of the giorgio armani eyes to kill in i believe it's this one in number five but look how beautiful that is. So these are stunning. I'm not getting rid of any of them because they're just, they're gorgeous. I have these three, Juice Beauty, the Organic Solution. They're the, um, I forget what these are called and I don't see them on here. So I'm just gonna swatch these. So I wore one of these on my eyes and my issue was that 
one i really like how it wore but it kind of started to crease a little bit on me i really like this shade which is 07 sangria you can see it right there and then this one is in prosecco i used to love drinking prosecco i think i'm gonna let go of prosecco because it's just not a shade i would reach for that often and then there's mimosa i was wearing mimosa and i feel like mimosa just wasn't as good as element so i was gonna let that one go but i will keep 07 sangria then last time i got rid of a lot of my milk makeup eye pigments but i kept these two silent disco and hotel lobby two of my all-time favorites these will not budge you could go swimming in these and they will not budge so very very beautiful very pigmented very buildable and love these here is an eyeshadow from burberry this is in rosewood and i just completely forgot about this so i need to keep it because it's one of those beautiful like is she wearing anything what is she wearing kind of things and i just forget about it because i have too much product so i'm gonna keep that then i have four of the hourglass scattered light glitter eyeshadows i really love these i wish they would come out with more shades this one is in the shade reflect which is so pretty and these are also just really lightweight and beautiful and very glittery so that's reflect this one is in what is this this one is in foil which is such a stunning gold it's a very bright gold this one is in aura which is a little bit more of a pinky purple which I think I can let go of at this point because I don't really reach for this type of a shade. So I'll let that go. And then the final one is Smoke. This one is probably the one I reach for the most because it's that like plummy metallic bronze shade. So definitely keeping that one. And then this is something very similar to that. I feel like it's the Char it's the Chanel Illusion de Ombre in New Moon. This is one of my longtime favorites. It's so beautiful. I just love that. So this one's a little more pigmented than the Hourglass one, but very, very beautiful. Love this one so much. And then this is the Char uh, Tom Ford Cream Color for Eyes in Spice. This is definitely way expired. I bought this like five years ago, but my mom bought it for me. It was one of my first Tom Ford beauty products when I was really, really into makeup. And she was like, why is this so expensive? But anyways, she bought this for me. I keep it for sentimental reasons. And then I have the Eyes to Kill in number five from Giorgio Armani. I haven't used this in a while, but I remember when Jaclyn Hill was like talking about it and I was like, oh my God, it's so pretty. Um, I kind of almost feel like I should let this go because it's really old. Also, I have so many other golds that I could wear. I think it's time to let this go. Then I've got the Charlotte Tilbury eyes to mesmerize in jean this is a really good base and i like how light it is and moussey it's also just a really beautiful all-in-one cream shadow it brightens up my eyes really easily so i think i'm going to keep this because i don't have anything really like this in my collection got the lima pure tiger eye i love this shade i'm not crazy oh man see i'm not crazy about how it's a loose pigment because I'm getting it all over my white towel. Um, yeah, I'm going to let this go just because while I love the color, I don't love the this like mess situation. We're now dealing with some eyeshadow palettes. My Tom Ford palettes, I got rid of a lot last time I decluttered. This one, I'm not letting go. This is the Eye Color Quad in Nude Dip. And then there's the Coco Mirage, which this is so beautiful and neutral. I know it's so basic, but that's totally me. Like, I'm basic. <laughs> um, it's also really old. I've had this for so many years. I feel like, oh, I don't want to let this go, but it, oh, it's so old at this point. You know what? I'm keeping it. I can't. I can't. I'm keeping it. Then I've got this limited edition palette, the Bronze Goddess Desert Heat from Estee Lauder. And it's really stunning. I just haven't reached for it, so I'm gonna let it go. I have the Ether Beauty. This is clean and minimal waste because they don't have the mirror. You can recycle all of this. I really enjoy this, so I'm gonna keep this. It's a clean beauty product that I bought. And then I have the new Bare Minerals Bounce and Blur Eyeshadow in Dusk. I used 
this and I really liked it, but I just don't think I need it because um, the colors aren't enough for me to create one look. I would just wear these separately and they're really beautiful. I love the bouncy texture and this is such a beautiful like individually shade wise, but I don't have enough to like where I would actually reach for this all the time or travel with it. So I'm going to let this go. I have this Pacifica eyeshadow palette. It is the pink nudes mineral eyeshadow, hundred percent vegan, cruelty free and clean. I really like this. It's very soft eyeshadows. They're very wearable, very good for every day and they just have a good color range and it's hard for me to find pigmented blendable clean eyeshadows so I think people are doing a better job but it's not something that I have a lot of so I'm definitely keeping that one then I've got this Estee Lauder and Violette this is her collection that came out around the spring and this is the eyeshadow palette absolutely absolutely stunning I really love this uh, color range. I love these shadows. You can see I definitely love the metallics, but I just haven't reached for it in a while So I think I'm gonna let it go. I don't know. I'm gonna actually put it right here and that's a maybe Then I also from the same collection have the cheeks now I am gonna let this one go just because I definitely have not reached for it and there are other cheek products I reach for a little bit more. This is the Charlotte Tilbury instant look in a palette This is one of my favorite kind of like all-in-one palettes, but I haven't reached for it in a while I'm not ready to let it go yet, so I'm gonna keep it a little bit longer. Um, it's good for, I think, three years. So then I have some of the Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadow palettes, which I absolutely love because they create beautiful looks. This is Dolce Vita, one of my first ones I got from Charlotte Tilbury. This is obviously not the same one. I, this is the second one, and I love it. Then there's the Uptown Girl. And this is definitely more of that like smokier look and I don't have too many smoky looks so I'll keep that and this is Golden Goddess which I love this is so beautiful more excessive I also have these Charlotte Tilbury ones I purchased these myself these are the limited edition ones the, um, love eyes power eyes happy eyes and confident eyes I would say this was not the best purchase for me because I was hoping it would be like the first one the instant eye palette this one was my absolute favorite and you can see desk eyes was my favorite favorite this one i just didn't reach for as much and i'm gonna try to because i definitely spent a lot of money on this so i'm gonna keep these just a little bit longer um just to see now something that i have kept saying i'm gonna use and i don't is this anastasia palette i bought it it took me forever to buy it and then once i bought it i never used it so i'm gonna let this go at this point because Clearly, for whatever reason, I'm not reaching for it, and there's other things I need to rotate in, so someone who knows me gets to have that. I, ooh, I have this Lily and Coco palette. This is also a clean brand, but the problem is all of these shadows are so shimmery that while I love them, they're just too shimmery all around. So this is something that I've noticed with clean beauty products, so I'm gonna let this go. Unfortunately, this Gabriel eyeshadow palette just didn't work for me, so I'm going to let that go. The Zuzu Lux, which again, in theory, I wish it worked better, but the shades just aren't my cup of tea, so I'm going to let this one go as well. This is the Beach Boho, and then this one is the uh, eyeshadow palette in Classic 2 palette. I have the Jouer Monarchs palette, which just came out. I love what they're doing. I haven't played with this enough yet. I have a feeling this stuff is what I'll be wearing more, and this is not stuff I'm going to wear too much. I love the mirror. Um, I still have to test this out a little bit more. So this is kind of in that, like, maybe. Then I've got this NARS Limited Edition Orgasm. I love the little packaging here. Um, and then these now in theory i love these because they're so unique so different very wet and shimmery but i don't use them so i'm gonna let them go oh i also have the exagger eyes from charlotte tilbury this one is beautiful i love 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 this one then i have my elf and jay kissa palette if you guys followed my know by journey you know that i thought long and hard about this and i barely ever reached for it so i'm gonna let this go um i just wanted to support Jess she's so sweet she's always been very very kind um, so I supported her but I just don't reach for it so I'm gonna let this go I have this palette from NARS it is the skin deep palette and let's open this up 
I think this is this beautiful, beautiful neutral palette. I love this giant size of the transition shades and then like more of that. I think this is a maybe right now. And then I have my palette that Makeup Forever created for me. This is just my favorite. I love this top three row. Top three of top row. I love the top row. I have an Antonym eyeshadow palette. This kind of got forgotten about, but I definitely need to revisit this. It's a clean palette and the palette name is Noisette. I have the Jouer Tan Lines Matte Shimmer and Luxe Foil Eye Palette. This was so stunning, but very, very summery, so I'm going to let this go. I have a Kevin Aquan palette. This is Emphasize Eyes Design in Focused. I love the shade range. Um, it does crease a little on me, I found. So I think I'm gonna let this go just because I have so many similar shade range like this and it did crease a little bit on me. I have the new Naked Honey palette and I've been wearing this. I really like it. It's really fun to play with. I wore this just all over the lid and it was a really pretty like gunmetal smoky look. If you look at that, it's very pigmented. I really enjoyed it. I have the Game of Thrones palette and I was so obsessed with this when it came out because I'm such a huge Game of Thrones fan, but uh, like most people, I think we were all very disappointed by the outcome of the show. I don't love the packaging because it's very cardboard-esque and it's not long-lasting, so I think I'm going to let this go just because I don't need it. Then this is one of my favorite palettes from Ofra. It's their Pro Palette and it's the Boho Palette. I don't know why more people don't talk about this palette. It is absolutely stunning. It has everything you need for your entire face and eyes and setting powder. So it's really, really stunning. One of my favorite things that Ofra has come out with. So that's not going anywhere. Um, so this is very controversial. I bought this before I knew any of the stuff that was going on. Unfortunately, I never reach for it, but I kind of keep it around because in case I ever wanted to do a look, there's a color of everything. So I don't know. I think I might just keep it around. I don't know how I feel about it. I don't know, guys. What do you think? Let me know in the comments if I should keep it or not. So those are the two big palettes, Ofra and Morphe. I definitely support Ofra a lot more than Morphe. Then there's the Lila B eyeshadow palette in Be Stunning. This is just a really pretty, easy, effortless eyeshadow palette that I'm going to keep. And I have these nude sticks that I didn't know where to kind of like put them. So I just put them in here. It's the... Nude Stick Artist Box. Um, I love Nude Stick's eyeshadows. They're really, really beautiful. Some of the lip stuff isn't my favorite, but then, you know, it just depends. Like the magnetic eye colors I really like, but some of the lips, lip and cheek things aren't my favorite. Like Kiss isn't my favorite shade because it just doesn't match me very well. So I actually will let that go. I'm, like there's no need to keep a, sh a thing just because every one just because it's part of a kit and then this is the haven gel color i wasn't a fan of this gel formula it just feels sticky to me so i'm gonna let that one go um but i do love this eye color this is the magnetic luminous eye color in Prera, pariah and then there's the pink seashells eye color which I'm not going to wear, so I'm going to let that one go as well. So really, I'm just going to keep these three shades that I like. Uh, this is the Marooned, and then Prana, and Rustic Grotto. Let me show you what that one looks like. That one's really pretty. I feel like I have this, though, in something else. I'll keep... Uh, I'm going to let this go. So I'm really just keeping these two. <laughs> For eyeshadows, I feel like I did okay. I didn't do too much damage i don't know guys should i keep this one i don't know i feel like i should keep this just a little bit longer and then i've got this that i need to play with um let's see yeah i think i'm just gonna keep this for a little bit longer because i really like it I feel like it's just very neutral, but is that boring? I feel like it's boring, but that's me. I'm kind of boring. Okay, so that's what I'm keeping for now. 
For an eyeshadow primer, I only have one, so I'm not decluttering it. This is the Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion Original. Now, I don't always use an eyeshadow primer for the most part. I just use my concealer and set it with powder, and I don't like adding another step. But every so often, you might need a primer, so this is the one I keep. Let's talk about the mascaras. Now, most of you guys might know this, but I am currently on my living my best lash extension life, so all of these really need to go, but let me tell you about them and my thoughts on them. First one, if I were going to repurchase one, it would be the Ilia After Midnight Limitless Lash Mascara. This is the best clean mascara that I have found in terms of volume and length. Now, the only thing about it is that with clean mascaras, sometimes the volume's not as much as you would hope, but you can definitely build this up. It's an amazing, amazing mascara. Really awesome. Love that it's cruelty-free and clean as well. One of my favorite mascaras. So I'm gonna wash the, all of these brushes and send them to the baby animals that need them. Now we've got the Urban Decay Perversion Waterproof Mascara. This is a great mascara if you need a waterproof, voluminous mascara. And I did enjoy it before my lash extensions. It was really good and I love the volume it creates. And it's definitely very long lasting. So the packaging is kind of fun too. Then we've got the Zuzu Lux Mascara in Onyx. This is a good clean mascara, very um, simple, not too much volume, very buildable though, very traditional type of mascara. Um, reminds me a lot of some of the Maybelline Great Lash mascaras. So I'm gonna let this go just because I don't need it. Then I've got the Grande Lash Intense Thickening Mascara with Castor Oil. This is a very thickening mascara, sometimes maybe a little too thickening for me. It's also a very wet brush, so it's just personal preference. If you have really sparse long lashes, you'll love this mascara. This was very, very, very thick. Then I've got the Zuzu Luxe Blue Mascara in Navy. I just like blue mascaras to layer because it brightens up the whites of your eyes. That's a little makeup artist trick. I'm not a makeup artist. I learned it from a makeup artist. And we've got the new Damn Girl Too Faced Mascara. This is the newest mascara from Too Faced. Very large brush, very similar to the Better Than Sex Mascara in terms of the brush size. The volume of this is amazing. I really think that it does a good job at grabbing your lashes and creating volume. I don't know which one I like more. If you guys ask me, because I'm sure someone would ask me that, I don't know, guys. I don't know. Sometimes I feel like the brush is too big. I wish they'd come out with a mascara with just as much volume, just as much wetness, just the same formula, but a smaller brush for those of us with Asian eyes. This is the new Laura Mercier Caviar Volume Mascara. I really enjoyed this, and this is right before I got my lash extensions. I love the twist of the bristles. I like that it's a traditional fiber bristles. Really grabs and pulls the lashes and separates them while creating volume. Great mascara, I definitely recommend this one if you're looking for a voluminous mascara. Here is the Thrive Cosmetics Liquid Lash Expert Ex extensions mascara a lot of people love this mascara uh, for me it was more lengthening than anything and I usually am looking for volume so I would use this to separate my lashes especially if I was using the grande lash mascara where it was getting a little chunky this did a great job at separating so I love the brand thrive cosmetics because I love what they do and what they stand for but this one um, if you want length this is your your guy I have a brand new Mascara from by Terry. I'm gonna just give this to someone. These aren't going anywhere So let's just talk really quickly about these. These are my Glossier lid stars. They're very effortless Washes of color so I keep all of them just because I like them and I don't know I really like Glossier as a brand. I've worked with them for a while and they're just really cool peeps so I'm gonna keep them. I have all of my eyeshadow sticks, mainly from Laura Mercier because they're my favorite. This is the Ilia and She Was. This is what I use on my lower lashes to brighten up my lower lash line and my eyes. It's the perfect shade of champagne-y, just bright enough, not too white, not too dramatic. And then I've got all of my caviar sticks. So actually I have one Charlotte Tilbury one, which is the Color Chameleon in Amber Haze. So beautiful like that one a lot this one is in rose gold from laura mercier this is one of my favorite ones also for my lower lash line if i want a more metallic look or all over the eyes it's really beautiful then there's vanilla kiss which is a great base we've got caramel which is a great neutral and these once they set do not go anywhere so don't like 
answer a text message or anything like that. This one is an intense amethyst, which is a beautiful shimmer. I really love this shimmer. It's like a purpley shimmer. And then this one is in plum, which is just a beautiful plum shade. Um, really, really beautiful for the fall. We've got gray pearl, which is again, a very beautiful like iridescent kind of look. Every so often I just like keeping these, even though it's not shades I wear every day, every so often I like to like adventure out. And then here's Coco, which is definitely something that I you would see me wear all the time. I also like using these with an angled brush to create a really smooth eyeliner effect. And then this one is in Smoke, which again, beautiful eyeliner. Then we've got Kahaki, which is a really gorgeous, like Kahaki army green shade. Then we've got Cobblestone, which I keep around because you just never know when you need a shade like this. And then this is Amethyst. I think I already have Amethyst, so I'm gonna let this one go. That was a double. Intense Moonlight. Oh, that one's stunning. Intense Moonlight is so pretty. And th this one is in metallic taupe. So these are some of the newer shades. I really love that as well. These are really beautiful eye-catching pops of color. We've got Tuxedo, which is black. Again, I keep that around just you never know when you need a black. And then here is Rush. This is something I wore a lot this spring. Both Christine and myself wore this a lot. We love that like glitter. And there's Sand Glow really pretty kind of muted bronze sapphire beautiful beautiful blue burnished bronze really pretty like almost plummy metallic and copper one of my favorite favorite shades that really bright gold so all of that is staying because I have a problem. Some eyeliners. Let's talk about some of my liquid eyeliners first. This is a cake liner from Laura Mercier. I love this. It's so easy to use. You just wet your brush and then you create the perfect cake line with whatever brush you use. That's not going anywhere. Ofra Fix Line Eyeliner Gel. The best gel eyeliner, guys. Super black, super pigmented, so freaking good. So that's not going anywhere. And then I have all of my eyeliners from Zuzu Luxe. I love the formula of these. Not crazy about the brushes, but really love them. And they're clean. So that's really important to me, especially things around the eyes whenever possible. These, you can see the brush is just a little bit thicker. And this is an Azure. But it's so hard to find this kind of pigmentation in an eyeliner from Clean Beauty. So I'm definitely keeping these. Um, that's the blue. This is in Luxor. I wore Luxor a lot this spring. It just gives you this beautiful bronze. And a trick you can do with this is just use your own brush working with it. Here's Amethyst, which is a nice plummy purple. Then we've got Nile, which is a beautiful, beautiful green. And finally, we have Torig, which is a brown. So stunning. Love these. Okay, I'm going to switch you guys around because the light is changing. Let's move into some felt liners. I think I only have two, which is good. I didn't open a bunch. This one I love. It's the Tom Ford one, so I'm definitely keeping. What I love about it is that there's a really delicate brush. And the brushes are the calligraphy brush, which I personally prefer. And then there's the larger brush, which is like that. Um, this does smudge, so if you have really watery eyes, I don't recommend this. But it seems to be fine for me unless I start like having a meltdown. Then I've got Ofra Verified Liquid Liner. This is very similar in terms of the brush, which I love. And I just absolutely love this brush but this is kind of dried out actually I'm gonna let this go I've had it for a while okay now let's talk about some pencil eyeliners I just really love these Sisley Paris ones and I declutter I kept these for my last declutter and I swatched all of them so I'm gonna keep these again and then I've got 
the Wonder Pencil from NYX, which to be honest, I just never use. So I'm gonna let that go. I have the Glossier Play Color Slide in Brack, which I really love how creamy these are. So I feel like I'm gonna keep them a little bit longer. Alima Pure in Coffee. This is a clean brand, so I really wanna keep that. Look at that pigmentation too for a pencil. That's great from Alima Pure. Um, I have the Hourglass 1.5 in Bronze. This one is great to tight line, but because of my lash extensions, I'm just gonna let this go to someone else. I have a lip pencil in the wrong pile. Here is the Game of Thrones, the Night King. I really love this color, so I wanna keep that. And also from the Game of Thrones, this is in the shade Dragon Smoke, which is a very unique black, because there's like almost a red to it. And I have some more color play from Glossier. This one is in Cash Salad. Very unique shade. And then this one is in Magic Carpet, which is also a really unique shade I'm gonna keep. Game of Thrones, this is in the shade Lannister Gold, which is almost like a silver gold, and I wanted to keep that because I thought it was very unique as well. And then I have this Elf and Jay Kissa pencil eyeliner. I really liked this blue, um, but I have a lot of blues, so I'm going to let that go. And then there's the color slide in Stable Relationship, which is such a unique color again. So it doesn't take up too much room. I'm going to keep that as well just to see if I'll play with it and explore with colors. So those are all of my eyeliners I'm going to keep. Let's talk about some bronzers. Okay, here are all my bronzers. This is new. I just bought this a while back. Soul Tan de Chanel. Not going anywhere. Classic. I can't believe I bought this. Um, I bought like three of these in my lifetime. I just love it. I gotta use this more because I forgot to use it because I forgot I had it. This is the bronzer I kind of have reached for the most out of the last few months and it doesn't even look like I've touched it. You guys, makeup lasts so long. It really is no reason for us to buy excessive amounts of makeup or to hoard it because it really truly lasts so long before you hit pan and just use what you have. If you see a tutorial, you see a look that you like, I promise you, you could probably create it with the stuff you already own. And if you really need to, that's when you should purchase new things. Um, obviously this is coming from someone who has excessive amounts of beauty products because of what I do for a living. I want to reiterate, watching these videos should not give you FOMO, should not make you want to go out and buy things. It's to give you a good idea of maybe what you want to add to your collection after very much looking at what you own and thinking about what you have and what you actually need in your collection and most likely i would say that you don't need anything it's a want and it's something i really learned over the course of this last year and really evaluated in the last two years of my life as things just became more excessive and I wanted to create content that was still enjoyable, still fun, still related to beauty because that's what got me started on YouTube, but also in a realistic manner, in a sustainable manner, in a way that hopefully makes you feel better about your own collection and what you have in your life because none of this matters. It's, it's about being healthy and happy on the inside and this just accentuates that or can maybe help you feel better but excessive spending on beauty products is not something I want to encourage here. I want you to think about the products that you want to add and I want to give you good information about products and reviews, honest reviews, and share with you new innovative products and hopefully inspire you to think about what you want to add to your life or just help you unwind and de-stress and relax and you know chill out take your mind off of whatever it was you needed help taking your mind off of because that's what youtube was for me and why i wanted to start this community here so this is the zuzu Lux medium mosaic illuminator i use this all over the face i love this stuff that's not going anywhere i have the hourglass bronzer in nude bronze light this is still pretty new and i do like it so i'm gonna keep it um i have some bronzers from bare minerals and these are i believe they're newer this is in faux tan this is a little too dark for me so i'm gonna let that go and then this one is in warmth i love warmth from bare minerals it's one of my favorite so i want to keep that then i've got the milk makeup matte bronzer i feel like this gets a little wet on me i don't know what do you guys think about this have you tried it i just never reach for it so i'm thinking maybe i should let this go 
and then I have the Bare Minerals Bro Bare Pro Glow Bronzer in warmth. Do I need both? Do I need the powder and the liquid? Yes, yes I do. I am gonna let go of this contour bronze from Armas Beauty. It just wasn't the greatest shade for me. So that is gonna go. Add the Well People Bio Baked Bronzer in one natural tan. I really like this. Um, is this very similar though to the warmth from Bare Minerals? You know what? It's very similar. I'm going to keep the Well People one and then let go of this one. I've got the Estee Lauder Bronze Goddess. This I haven't really used a lot, so I'm going to let that go. This is the B Sunkissed from Lila B, which I love. So that's not going anywhere. It's a very warmy bronze. I like the warmy tones. You can mix it together. Part of Project Pan, my contour wand from Charlotte Tilbury. Love this stuff for contouring. Uh, didn't really love the fluff so i'm gonna let this bronzer go it's also really just cumbersome and then i have this bronzer duo from Ch uh, jouet sunkissed L love jouet bronzers so going to keep this i just realized i forgot to talk about these powders when i was talking about powders though these are great setting powders from jouet so i'm keeping these because they're so good and they kind of got lost because i forgot about them so i'm going to put these in the powder section but this is what i will be keeping for bronzers not too many i have two creamy ones one contour and then some powdery ones okay let's talk about some face palettes i have cheeks face situations here this is something that i cannot believe how much i love and i always reach for a couple times a week perfector face palette in light medium and oh it's amazing they have two they have a darker one for deeper skin tones so you've got two highlights a blush a finishing powder a brightener and a contour love this palette so much really nice large size mirror um this is not going anywhere i have the pacifica a light radiance powders this is really beautiful and i love that there's two highlights a bronzer and a blush a little bit softer than the cover fx one um you can see that the blush is a little softer than the cover fx blush but very very comparable and also i just like supporting pacifica so i'm gonna keep this around i have two palettes from nars these were limited edition which is why i think i'm going to pass them on because i I don't know i feel like with limited edition i share it with you guys and then because if i use it again and you guys want to see it like you can't get your hands on it things like that so anyways i really love this corally um blush but i have corally blushes so i will be letting these go to somebody who is going to use it all up i am going to be keeping my charlotte tilbury um goddess bronze what is this film star bronze and glow this is just a great product and then i have the ilia summer essential face palette this i didn't even really use so i'm gonna let this go just because i think the creams are a little bit harder than i like this is something that i've repurchased multiple times this is the hourglass Illum sheer trio this is the contour highlight and blush beautiful beautiful product i've used this for years um this one's even been used to death it's just so good so this is like a cream version of my cover fx one and then i have an hourglass palette this one's really pretty this is the ambient light edit volume four and then this one is my favorite one that they ever came out with and this is the ambient light edit lighting edit surreal light this powder right here. I know this is a little old, but I'm keeping these just because I really love them. And then I have a highlight and blush palette from Madison Miller and Ofra. This is a really beautiful, like more mauve muted blush and highlight. I've been really enjoying her collection and I love, love, love the colors she chose. So this is not going anywhere either. Moving into highlights. This is probably the hardest category, but I know for sure I'm letting go of the Game of Thrones Mother of Dragons highlight palette. I use this on a makeup tutorial for Instagram stories, and it's really pretty, but I just don't reach for it. So I'm going to let this go. Like I mentioned earlier, I think this is where the flawless filter belongs in terms of my Charlotte Tilbury flawless filter. So I think I'm going to give this a little longer of a try. I just have to figure out how it works for me. This is something I really love. It is the Essence Pure Nude Highlighter. And I use this to buff in my cheek and highlight. And it just creates this like flawless filter on my face. So I'm going to keep that. This is the Physician's 
formula rose all day petal glow i did a first impression on this and it's a really really pretty shimmery highlight but i think i have other ones i rather keep so i'm gonna let this one go I have the Glossier Halo Scope in Quartz. This is one of my favorite ones from Glossier, and I like to keep that around. It just gives you that like dewy wet look. This is from Gabriel Cosmetics. It's their late Liquid Radiance. I really love this one, and Gabriel was on the podcast as well, and he's just really innovative. So I love it. I love it comes in a ro roller ball, and this is in the rose gold shade. I have the Kevin Aquan Glass Glow Face Illuminator. This is a very unique product and I like it for that purpose. It's not an everyday product for me, but it creates this really beautiful iridescent wet glow on the skin and it really highlights certain areas if you wanna use it for that purpose. Then I've got some of my favorite highlights from Jouer. This is in Citrine really really beautiful which is why i got rid of the physician's formula one it's very similar but the citrine from jouet is a little bit better in terms of pigmentation and same with topaz from jouet some of my favorite liquid highlights are from ilia and these are the three that they have my favorite one is going to be nova my only issue is these caps keep breaking on me. The one from Atomic is already broken. This is more of an iridescent. And then I'm just going to throw this cap away at this point. And then this one is in Astrid, which is also really, really stunning. So I love these. These are definitely my favorite. So I'm keeping these, which is why I'm going to get rid of the Alginist Concentration Luminizing Drops. This is really gorgeous as well, but I just like the Ilia one a little bit more. Then I've got the Lila B B Dazzling Cream Highlight. This is really pretty, really easy to use, very balmy. I like that. I have a By Terry Gem Glow Trio Compact. I think I'm going to let this go because I just haven't really used it. It's very, very highlighty and I just, I don't think I need it. You know, I've got other things that I I can work with and I think someone else will really enjoy this. I have the NARS Super Radiant Booster in, I don't know, this, this is just really nice though. I think this might have been limited edition but you might still be able to get it in the NARS boutique. I have to double check on that but it's a really pretty creamy highlight so I wanted to keep this as well. Mass and Miller highlight, she has two of them, this one is in Sea Shimmer and the Moon Dance. I'm keeping these just because I still have to update you guys on Makeup Bag Monday, which will co be coming up very soon. I'll be back into that. So love these Ofra highlights. Love Madison. So those are staying. Um, this is my ride or die highlight. I learned about this highlight thanks to Kathleen Lights. This is the Laura Mercier Baked Highlight 01. This just is the most natural radiant highlight. It's so beautiful and it just looks really amazing. Never going to live without that. Here is my Dior highlight that I spent way too much money on and I cannot let go because of that reason. <laughs> I have the Cover FX Custom Enhancer Drop and this is in Sunlight. I don't ever use these. I, I love them. I just never reach for them and I think it's just, I don't know. So I'm going to let this go because someone else can use it. And then I have the Gabriel Cosmetics. This is the Multi Pot in Magnolia. There's a couple different shades. I like the concept of this. It's a really beautiful, like, highlighty, rosy gold kind of situation. You can use it all over the face, and I think it's pretty, so I'm going to keep this around a little longer. Maya Chia, the highlight of the day. I was obsessed with this for a while because it's so gorgeous, and it's got this really lovely chia seed oil. Um, I think I'm going to keep this because it's really more skincare than anything. And then I have the Alima Pure Highlight in Lumina. This is really pretty. A lot of product. And I wish it wasn't loose, but it is because it's clean, so they probably didn't use anything. This is really pretty. I'm going to keep this because I don't have a lot of clean highlighters in powder form. And then I've got the Armani Highlight in, I think it's just A Highlight is what it's called. And I just never reach for this still for whatever reason, but I'm going to try to. And I've got, I have the Glossier Play highlighter in, what is it? Is it Night Shine? This is really fun, really glowy, very similar to some of the other ones I have, but 
I'm going to keep this around because I haven't really used it. Lunch Money from ColourPop, one of my favorite like moussey highlights from them. It's a very unique formula, very like blendable. So I think I'm going to keep that as well. And then I'm going to let go of this one. This is from Givenchy and it's their Dore highlight. It's a really beautiful golden highlight, but I feel like someone else will get more use out of that. I have the Magic Luminizer from RMS Beauty. This is pretty new to me still. Um, it's my second pot. So I'm going to keep this around just a little longer because I just got it. I have the Beauty Wand from Charlotte Tilbury. This is part of my Project Pan, so that's not going anywhere, and I also just love it. This is the Jouer Molten Glow All Over Highlight. This is stunning. Look at that. Look at that. It's like legit. So I haven't played with this too much, and I love the glittery packaging, so I want to keep that a little bit longer. Now, two things that I'm going to let go of is the Coco Kind my Thai Rose highlighter and the Chaga bronze just because I haven't really oh I'm gonna keep the bronze because I don't have anything like that and then maybe I'll keep this I don't know I think I'm gonna let go of the highlight but I'll keep the Chaga bronze so these are all the highlighters I'm going to be keeping and let's move on to blushes here are all of my blushes let's keep with this train a going Here's the Kevin Aquan, the Neo Blush and Pink Sand. This is something I've really been enjoying lately because you can go from deeper mauve all the way to a lighter pink, and I think that's really unique in one product. So I'm gonna keep that. Now I have the Orgasm NARS Blush. This is their limited edition shade. I don't really reach for this just because Orgasm looks great on a lot of people, not so much on me, so I'm gonna let this one go. I actually think this would look really pretty on Samantha. And then I have the two blushes from Madison Miller, which will be in an updated makeup back Monday, so this is staying for now. I have the Cover FX Monochromatic Blush Duo in Soft Peach. I completely forgot I own this, so I'm gonna keep this a little longer. I have the Kosas Tropic Equinox. This is stunning. I love this cream duo, and it's it was part of my Tester Tuesdays. So, so stunning. Really pretty, love this. And then the Contra Chrome, which is a powder duo. I've had this for a while and I really like it as well. So keeping that from Kosas, I just really like Kosas. I then have the Jouer Blush in Terracotta Sands and Hot Coral. This is really stunning. This is from the Summer Collection. I love the Terracotta Sands shade, so I think it's very unique. I wanna keep that a little bit longer. I have the Cheek to Chic Swish and pop blusher in ecstasy this is stunning I'm going to keep that and then in climax from charlotte tilbury which is a very mauvey thing i love that it's a really beautiful blush this i think i can let go of this is the flesh beauty i used it a little bit but i think i have other things in here so i will let that go i have a blush in peach from Laura Mercier, which is really pretty, and then in Ginger. So I'm going to keep Ginger because I don't have anything else like this. And Peach is very similar to the other things I'm keeping. So I'm letting that go. Um, I have all of these new Bare Minerals Bounce and Blur blushes, and I don't love the shades. I love the formula of this. So I think I'm going to keep this one because it is a really pretty blurred buff. And then I'm probably going to keep the coral, which, or maybe, I don't know, I have a lot of coral. This pink I definitely don't like. This is Bounce and Blur in Pink Sky. Definitely don't like that one. It's too pink for me. Um, maybe this one. This one's Mauve Sunrise. I think I'll keep Mauve Sunrise because I don't have anything else that I'm keeping that's like that. Something I really like for just on the go is the Tata Harper Very Sweet Cheek Tint in Tres. Deuce. It's very pretty. I use this quite a lot. I have all of my cloud paints, which I love from Glossier. These are really beautiful, so I'm keeping that. Then I have a blush from Hourglass. This is in Dim Infusion. It's a really gorgeous natural shade powder blush. Smith & Colt blush in Universal Peach. Um, I'm actually going to let this go because I like it, but I don't reach for it that often. We are getting to the wire, guys. i got to let things go. This is the Lip to Cheek in RMS Beauty. And here's the issue. I really love the way that this 
typically looks, but it doesn't look good on my lips. It only looks good on my cheeks, and I think I have other things that are like that mauve color. So I'm gonna let this go, even though I loved it when I first got it. This is something that's probably just like old at this point, but I really love this shade. It's the Estee Lauder Victoria Beckham Cheek Cream in Cheek. Yeah, it's just the cheek cream. It's so gorgeous. It's a very terracotta-esque shade. Um, it's so old, but I really like that shade. Uh, here's the Ilia Ladybird. This is really beautiful. It's a gray cream blush. This is pretty old. This is the Sisley Paris in Papaya. I love this color, but I'm going to let it go because it's old and I honestly don't reach for it. Then I've got the Poppy Girl from the Nudies collection from Nude Sticks. This one is a little too poppy for me, just too bright. I just don't wear it, so I'm going to let that go. This is the shade Sunkissed, which I really love from Nude Sticks, so I'm going to keep that. Here is the Anami Boosting Lip and Cheek Stick. It's in Rani, and I thought it was such a unique shade, but this definitely has like melted a couple times, so I'm going to let that go. I have the Beach Stick in Forma Terra, which I love. I've been really into this like more uh, terracotta brown shade, I feel like, so I'm going to keep that. These are some of the best new cream multi-haze pigments. This is the Color Haze Multi Matte Pigments from Ilia. I love these, so I'm keeping all four of the shades. My favorite one, if you needed to know, is Waking Up and Stutter. These are two of my favorites. Use them on the eyes, lips, and face. So keeping all of that. Then I've got my Herbivore. This is pretty old. I'm going to let this go. It's starting to like get weird stuff on it. I have a bunch of these Lila B Divine Duos. These are some of my favorite like all-in-one lip and cheek. So this one is in Be Lovely, which if you're going to try any of them, I would say Be Lovely is the first one to try. Very universally flattering. I also have Be Darling, which is a corally red. Really like that shade. Very corally red. And then I have Be True, which is a really pretty like mauvey pink. And I have Be Real, which is this one I think I could let go of because it's a little um, too pink for me. It's like a little Barbie pink, so I'm going to let that one go. And then I have Be Memorable, which is this beautiful berry tone. Um, running out of fingers, gotta go wash my hands. So that's the berry tone. And then I have Be Fearless, which is a true, beautiful, blue-toned red. So that's all of the blushes I'm keeping, all the blushes I'm getting rid of. Final category, lips. To be honest, I don't wear a ton of lipstick anymore or liquid lip. I do glosses or tinted lip balms. So I got to be a little bit more strict here, I feel like. First pile, lip balms. I like to keep the Glossier Generation G's around just because I like them and, you know, I hoard things apparently. So I'm keeping all of the Glossier Generation G's. These are brand new as well. And then I really love these Jouer Tinted Lip Balms. These are my favorite, favorite, favorite tinted lip balms currently. This is in Dahlia. Totally keeping that shade. And again, this is what I wear mostly. I think there's like two in my purse right now that I didn't grab. This one is in Poppy, which is a really pretty red. This one is in Natural, which is clear. This is probably one that I could get rid of because I don't need a bunch of clear things right now, but I'm going to keep it just for now. Then I have Amaryllis, which is brownie, but it's so pretty still. Look at that prettiness. And then we've got this one, which is Peony, which actually, you know what? I could let go of Peony. I don't need Peony. Then I have the Lila B. I love these. I'm not crazy about the packaging necessarily because this one, which you can see is the one I use the most. This one is in the shade B Elegant. What ends up happening is that, well, actually this one's not so bad, but these are really nice. I like this one. Um, this one I think is the one I use more. Be Remarkable. Look how messy that gets. So I'm going to actually let this one go because I think it's a design flaw in this packaging particularly. I just got a bad one. And Elegant doesn't have that issue. But Be Remarkable such a good shade. This is Be Romantic. And I'm not crazy about this shade because I just don't think it flatters my skin tone. So I'm going to let that one go. But I love the formulas 
of these. I hope they come out with new shades and I hope they fix the problem on one of the packagings. Okay, lip balms. I've got the Basalt Blood Orange. We used to carry this in our shop. I really like that. I also like the Hyaluronic Acid Booster Lip from PCA Skin. So those are just like hydrating goodies. Then I've got the Sugar Spice. You guys know how much I love the sugar lip treatments and the tinted in spice is so pretty. So I'm gonna keep that. Three of these lip balms from NARS and I don't feel bad about it because I will throw these in purses and lose them. But this is really lovely. It doesn't give you this weird like dead fish lips and this one has a nice little tint. So I'm keeping all those. I have the Laneige Lip Sleep Mask. This smells like cherry pocky, so I'm keeping that just for that reason. Um, I have this from Cosmetics, which I like. It's this topper, but it's also very nourishing and hydrating. It makes your lips look plumpier, so that's gonna stay. I've been really enjoying this Lather Lip and Cheek Tint from Rose. I use it actually more as a makeup product than I use as a hydrating product, but you know what, I'm gonna let this go because I have other things that look like this. I have the berrybalm.com, which I've been enjoying a little bit. This does have petrochemicals in it, um, but it depends on my mood. So there's that. And the Dior, this I feel like it's time to go just because I never reach for it. I'm gonna let that go. I have the Femme Fatale from Ilia. This is a really beautiful uh, lip conditioner, especially for fall. I'm, I could see myself wearing that a lot. This is a Ilia lip exfoliator, so I like to keep that around. I don't feel like I need the lip conditioner because I do have other hydrating products, so I'm gonna let that go. I have this tinted lip balm from Lila B. This is in the color B Cheeky, and I just don't really wear this this much of a tint, so I'm gonna let that one go. This is also from Lila B, and this one is in B Savvy. This one's not my favorite tint either. It's a little too plummy for me, so I'm going to let both of those go. This is a clear one, which I'm going to let go just because if it's not tinted, I don't really love it just as a balm on itself. Oh, I also have this Guerlain. This, I believe, is a lip balm that they gave me because it's very tinted. I have to use this more, but I love this packaging, so I'm going to keep it because it's refillable. And then I have my La Prairie Eye and Lip Balm. This is stunning. I don't love the way this tastes, but I love how conditioning it is. And I also love this eye part, the balmy eye part. It's so good. Talk about some liquid lipsticks. This is my absolute favorite one that Christine got me. And this is from Style and Ada Velvet Lip Tint in Taupe. I wore this a lot this Spring. It's just this beautiful brick red and it stains your lips lovely. It's got a moussey texture So definitely keeping that then I've got Los Aloas from long lasting liquid lipstick Ofra I love Ofra's liquid lipsticks Jouer and Ofra are my two favorite long-lasting liquid lipstick formulas. So I'm keeping that one I also have Brickell, which is a beautiful red. I'm gonna keep that um, I'm not crazy about this shade from Lawless. This is Romeo. And I just, I don't find myself reaching for it very often. So I don't know, but I feel like with fall coming around, I might reach for it. So I might keep it a little longer. Then I have these, this one from Fenty Beauty. And you guys told me that it does separate. So just shake it up and it'll be okay. So this is like a true blue toned red. It's very flattering on all skin tones. And then I also got in Unveil, which is a brownie shade. I actually don't think I'm ever gonna wear that brown, so I'm gonna let that go. And then I have my Chanel Liquid Lip. This one I barely ever used, which is so sad. I really should just use my makeup more. I have the Glossier Play Vinyl Lip in Pony. This is a really unique formula. And I thought I would wear it more, but I actually just kind of forgot about it. It's a really mauve toned shade, so I think I'll keep that. Um, I have the Madison Miller Long Lasting Liquid Lipstick from Ofra. I really love this formula, and it's a really pretty mauve shade. So obviously I will update you guys on my thoughts on her collection in Makeup Bag Monday. Then I have the Clove & Hallow Liquid Lipstick. It's very rare to find a clean, long-lasting liquid lipstick. This is a very orangey red, so I thought I would test this out when fall approaches. I have three of the Makeup Forever Artist Nude Creams. These are really beautiful colors. Um, I'm gonna see if this one is similar to the Lawless one. I got rid of so many 
of my this one's actually too dark for me i don't think i would ever wear that dark so i'm gonna let that go i let go of a lot of my liquid lipsticks in my last declutter so i don't have a ton to declutter clutter in terms of liquid lipsticks this round this and this is very similar and i believe this was los alos so i think i'm gonna let go of the makeup forever one since i'll keep one of these from makeup forever this one that i still haven't tested from thrive cosmetics this is in the shade rowan and i thought i would like it but i just haven't reached for it it's a little too purple but i have to test out the formula for you guys for makeup bag monday still and then I have two toppers from Jouer. I have a Skinny Dip Mini, which I love. And then I have the um, Sea Glass, which is their recent little collection. I actually, I think I'm just going to keep Skinny Dip, so I'm going to let this go. That is what I'm keeping for liquid lipsticks. And let's move on to some lip glosses. I've been loving lip glosses lately, so I definitely am excited to share with you guys my lip gloss collection. Um, it's not a huge lip gloss collection for a beauty blogger, but it definitely could be pared down. This is one of my favorites from Urban Decay. This is the Hi-Fi Shine in Fuel. I think this is such a beautiful everyday lip gloss shade, and it has just enough pigmentation and it's never sticky, which is nice. So that's kind of like my um touchstone and then this i've really also loved this is the lip glaze from nude sticks in nude 08 and it's got a little bit more pigmentation in terms of like that mauve red tone or brick tone so i love both of these a lot and then i also have really been enjoying this one from thrive cosmetics and this is in ruth this works beautifully alone but it also looks really lovely over other products and this is just like a lip enhancing gloss so those are the three that i reach for the most and I thought I would go from there. Now I have two clear ones from Glossier. One is newer, so these are just purely clear. I am going to just keep the newer one and let go of the older one. Glossier also came out with two more shades. This one is a high glitter shine one and it is in holographic. So I just show you that. Again, really pretty on its own or over different products. And then this one is in the shade Red Rouge. I thought this was also really fun and unique and it's red but not super red so these are also really nice glosses to go along with those now this one is from madison miller it's smiley for riley and i love the peachy glitter tone and i really like the ofra glosses as well because they're very high shine but not sticky whatsoever but those are what those look like Zuzu Lux. I really like this lip gloss. I just don't like the color very much. I don't think it's very flattering for my skin tone, so I'm going to let this go. The lip gloss, this is the Hydro Gloss from Smith & Colt, and I liked it, but it's not something I feel like I need to keep, especially since it's very similar to my favorite from Urban Decay, so I'm going to let this go. I have one from Stellar Cosmetics, and I really like this because of the pigmentation, so I'm going to keep this around, even though it's very similar to the Fuel one, but a little bit more mauve and dark. Then I have a bunch of NARS ones. So these, I believe, came in a collection. I don't need to keep all of these, so let's swatch and see which ones I should keep. So this one is a really pretty like slight coral and this is in hue of fin so that's a maybe i don't like these like blue toned pinks so i'm gonna let that one go and then this one is in mark i can't pronounce these but this one might be a better option this is like that peachier one very jlo-esque so I might just keep that because I don't have anything like it. This is something more my speed. This is in Tao Moa. And I might keep this. But it's also very similar to Fuel. So I think I'll let that go. And then this is the Tinted Lip Oil in Orgasm. This was limited edition for the anniversary. And I think I'm going to keep this because I like the tinted lip oil idea. It's not a true gloss. It's more of an oil. I don't like the scent of the Fenty lip gloss. I love this color. It's called Fenty Glow, but I just, I can't stand that scent. So I have to let that go. Um, I never reach for it because of that. Champs Elysee High Shine or High Pigment Gloss from Jouer, one of my absolute favorites. And then this is the Dirty Chai from Bite Beauty. This is a little bit gross at this point, but 
I feel like it still smells okay, so I'm gonna keep using it. So those are the glosses I'm keeping, and it's really what I reach for the most when I do makeup now for lips. Jump over to lip liners for a little bit, and then we'll move on to lipsticks, and that is our final category. So these are from Buxom, and this is their Plump Line Lip Liner. I really love these when they came out, and I wore them to death. I feel like they're great. They're just a little bit more of that matte side, so I definitely wore them more in the fall, winter time. And I definitely want to keep both of these because they're really everyday lip colors for me. This one is in Covert Affair and then this one is in Undercover. A Pillow Talk lip liner from Charlotte Tilbury. I don't really love Pillow Talk. Am I the only one? But I think that she has better ones. Like Iconic Nude is better. So I'm going to let that go. Then I have Brick from MAC. I don't ever reach for this, so I'm going to let that go. I have the Lip Pencil 46 from Bite. I love that, so I'm going to keep that. Then I have the NYX Mahogany Lip Pencil, which is also really lovely. I have the Bite Lip Pencil in 78, which is a beautiful cherry red, so I'm going to keep that as well. I have a Clear Lip Liner from Bite. I have a Laura Mercier Pencil in Hazelnut Tea. This is probably my favorite nude one that matches my lips. Then I have the Lip Cheat in Iconic Nude. This is the one I think that is so much better from Charlotte Tilbury than Pillow Talk, but nobody talks about, everyone talks about Pillow Talk. Then I've got the Jouer Lip Liner in Rouge, which is stunning, very long lasting lip liner. I have Saffron from Laura Mercier, which is also a really beautiful like corally lip liner. And then this is the Jouer Lip Liner in Sable, probably one of my favorite nude lip liners that is my lips but better and also incredibly long lasting. And then I just have a lip um, brush that goes like that. I think it's kind of cool. That's from 100% Pure. So I'm keeping these. Moving along to lipsticks. Okay, last category, lipsticks. These are true lipsticks. So these are my Kosas lipsticks and these are not going anywhere. This one is in Stardust. I love, love, love Stardust like a rosy tone and then this one is in Thrillist which is a beautiful new addition it's like a corally red and these are very buildable you can shear them out or you can build them up and wear them like a true lipstick which I love and Kosas is clean so that's the rosy tone one now I also have Undone which is my all-time favorite you can see I definitely wear this one a lot more and it's just a little bit more of a mauve rose tone. So then, since I have these three, let's kind of base these as my touchstones. I have this Well People lipstick in Optimus Semi Matte, uh, lipstick in one, and this is probably a like peachy nude. I don't really wear shades like that, so I'm gonna let that one go. I have some new reformulated Laura Mercier lipsticks. This one's stunning. This one is in New Prefer. This one's just slightly pinker than that Well People one, so I'm going to keep it. I find that true nude lipsticks tend to make me look dead. This one is Beige Intimate. I think that one is like a little mauve so I'll definitely try that out. Then I've got this beautiful red with Rouge Ultimate. And every time I wear this, you guys ask me what's on my lips. So that's what's on my lips. Rouge Eclantant. I'm messing up all of these French names, but this one's a really beautiful like fuchsia pink almost. Um, I actually, I'm probably not gonna wear a fuchsia as much, so I'll let that one go. And then I have some Alima Pure. Actually, I just have one. This one is in Iris. I love this one. It's like a bricky coral. Really, really pretty. So gonna keep that one. I then I have two Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks. This one is in Amazing Grace. I keep this around just because of my mom's name. Her name was Grace. And then this one is in Very Victoria, which this is like one of those nudes that actually looks good on me, which is bizarre. So I'm keeping that. I have a MAC lipstick. I think I only have one MAC lipstick. This is in Chili. And I just love this like orangey red. But is this very similar to that? I feel like it's slightly different, the Lima Pure on this one, so I'm gonna keep both. Into my Ilia lipsticks, these are my favorites. So this one is in Maybe Baby, 
I wear this one the most probably and it's just my everyday lip color very hydrating too and then I have cinnabar which is their color block formula again one of my favorites and I have tango which is a beautiful red and I have rococo which is a beautiful like rosy pinky mauve really cool urban decay and game of thrones shade this is in white walker so it's that really cool plummy shade i actually think i'm gonna let this one go because i have other things like that then i have some lip pencils this one is in thal satin lip pencil from nars i don't love this shade so i'm gonna let that go this one in take me home which is a pretty like mauvey coral i will keep that i have this one is in Vaheen. I'm gonna let that go. It's a little too like blue tone pink for me. Um, this one is in Balboa. This is a pretty color. This one is probably a little too plummy, so I'm gonna or purpley, so I'm gonna let that one go. This is Ra Rahatia. This is a nice mauvey brown. I'm gonna keep that. This is the Bare Minerals in Cinnamon. I really love these when they came out, but I don't love this shade, so I'm gonna let that go. And I have this Bite Beauty Long Lasting one. This one's really awesome. This one's like really strong red. So almost a fuchsia red. Two of the Extreme Velvet Lip Matte Lipsticks from Laura Mercier. This one is in Control, which I really love. It's a true red for me and then this one is in fire which is a really pretty like orangey red so I don't think I have anything too similar to those then I just got this from my Sisley subscription and this is in 15 so this is just like a nice balmy lip I'll keep that around for a little bit and I have this one that I made from Bite Beauty, so I don't have a name for it, but I really like that coral. And then I have this, which looks very mauvey, but it's not. Oh, maybe it is, but it looks really good on me, so I'm going to keep that. And then I have this in Bite of LA, so this is the LA Bite shade, which is a nude. And yeah, so these are the lipsticks I'll keep, and those are the ones I'm going to pass on. Guys! I completely decluttered my entire makeup collection. I'm gonna show you the after right now, but remember the before, how cluttered it was, how full my drawers are. Now I can see everything again and be more efficient when I get ready in the mornings or wanna test out and rotate products. So I cannot believe we did it. We did it, uh, I started at 10, it is now 3 p.m. <laughs> yeah. Here is drawer number one. You can see I it still looks pretty full, but I am able to see where everything is now. Everything is in its place. We've got concealers, we've got primers, we've got setting sprays, we've got tinted products, we've got foundations, we've got highlights, we've got powders, we've got bronzers and highlight palettes and blushes, all of the pencil types of products. Moving right along to drawer number two, we've got glosses, liquid lipsticks, and more glosses, all of my Kosas shadows, my single shadows, my palettes, all of this stuff that needs to be a little bit organized. My drawer right here, all of my lip balms I like to reach for the most, some lip, more lip balms, and then all of my Makeup Bag Monday products I'm currently testing out as well as my Project Pan products. I have new palettes I want to test out here and I have an entire drawer free up here. Posted some of my favorite lip products right there. My brushes are right there. Um, this is such an improvement. As always, if you enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, don't forget to subscribe. Check back every Wednesday, Friday, and Sundays for new videos. Facial Fridays will be up, so make sure you check that out if you like to relax. And I really appreciate you guys watching this entire video. As always, all of my videos I create here are just to help you unwind and de-stress, take your mind off of whatever it is you need help taking your mind off of. It's how I discovered YouTube, why I wanted to start my own channel, why I continue to produce content, and I cannot think Thank you guys enough for all the support you've given me the last few months especially while I go through some mental emotional and life changes and difficulties so thank you so much and I will see you guys back here in my next video bye